Hey guys, Savage Joy here with Real Progressives. Tonight I am joined by Mayor John Fetterman. Uh, please pay no attention to the name on the screen. Um, it's his wife's account, obviously, um, but um, I'm very glad to have him here. We actually vote tomorrow. Um, so reminder to PA residents, um, get off your ass and vote tomorrow. Um, so thank you so much for joining us tonight, John. We really appreciate it. Thanks for having me on. Awesome. Um, so you are now the mayor of a town called Braddock in mm -hmm. PA. Yep. Um, and you decided to now run for lieutenant governor for yeah. the entire yeah. state. Um, so is that kind of a, a natural progression for you? Or why did you? Um, uh, the, the lieutenant governor uh, traditionally in Pennsylvania has been a... Uh, undervalued and underutilized role. And I, I think its greatest asset uh, has is really to be one for advocacy and, and, and championing uh, uh, issues and causes and things that are important. And, and uh, um, uh, for me, they've always been progressive, whether it's revolving around economic justice, whether it's involving uh, immigration, whether it's involving marijuana legalization, whether it's involving, um, I mean, well, you name it. It's just, I, I think it's, it's, it's um, a really important role uh, in, in state politics here that I, I think has been underutilized and, and we could really make it into something meaningful and important for, you know, kind of moving the needle uh, in the right direction, you know, here in the state. Right on. So you mentioned actually a number of things. What is your biggest goal? Should you win? Like, what is the absolute first thing you want to take care of? Well, you know, there's there's a lot of things. Uh, I, I you know, you want to stay in your lane, but but the the thing that's always driven me uh, professionally is is to to really be a champion for a, a lot of marginalized communities and the people that call those places homes. And I've been mayor, uh, the four term mayor of a community just like that. Uh, now and there's a lot of places like that all across Pennsylvania that really just have been left behind and you know inequality is rampant and um, I, I think that's the message that has um, you know I've always been working with and I think that's the reason why um, you know I, I you know you know Bernie's message really resonated and I'm proud to have his endorsement in this race as well too so um, I, I, I think the rampant inequality that we have in our society, I think, means that we as as uh, an elected official need to make you know, our platform about combating that, because I think so many of the things that are wrong uh, are really just an offshoot of that systemic inequality that we have in our society. Okay, right on. So, so speaking of Bernie, um, we I'm you know very involved in the in the Bernie community um, and have been for for several years. Um, a lot of burners do feel somewhat betrayed by you. Um, you've talked about that before. You this is not new. Um, we you you did. Um, state some not so nice things about th third party voters. Um, and uh, it didn't really get people to come back to the party. It actually got a lot of people to leave to dem exit. Um, so what what can you say to my Bernie brothers and sisters who I invited to to try and, uh, you know, kind of lack of a better term, win them back? and uh get them back when uh a lot of us felt betrayed well i i don't know why anyone would feel betrayed i um was the only candidate in 2016 that ran for the u.s senate that endorsed bernie um and after bernie didn't win the primary i uh, uh you know uh, so i'm not really sure i and when you have two choices as we had in in 2016 I said, uh, you shouldn't vote third party. You should vote for the better choice in the election. So it, it wasn't uh, anything against third party, uh, third party. It was just about voting for the, the, the better choice in, in that election. And that was uh, comparing, you know, Hillary Clinton to Donald Trump. And I, I don't think there is a comparison there. And I think uh, uh, the last, you know, whatever, 15, 16 months of the Donald Trump presidency has shown just how stark that choice was. It's it's definitely a scary situation for sure. Um, 
I think that people were just very surprised because we all supported you so much. And so many of us met you at Bernie events and, and things like that. Um, and you were very supportive of him. Um, but then you did come out and, and not only, you know, I couldn't care less who you, who you vote for, but you did start verbally, you know, supporting and, and, encouraging people to vote for Hillary and things like that. And that is the sense of betrayal we felt. Um, because the reason we don't have President Bernie right now is because of her. So that's why a lot of us couldn't vote for her because of the cheating. Um, so that's where that came in. Um, so, you know, we, we believe in people, not party. Um, so if, you know, if there are still some Bernie uh, Democrats out there, um, what what do you want to say to them? How can we try to bridge that divide this time? Um, at this time, I think it I think it's important to point out that Bernie did fully endorse and support Hillary Clinton in 2016 in in the race, and um, um, and campaigned for her, and through his support fully behind. So, uh, because I think Bernie saw the same thing that I saw in that Donald Trump was an existential threat to uh, this this country's future and good standing in the world and and that we needed a, a qualified candidate. And uh, I, I think uh, I, I think we've seen now what can happen. And when, when that, uh, and you, you have Donald Trump and that disastrous presidency that he's had. So, um, you know, in this race for running for lieutenant governor, uh, I was honored to have uh, Bernie support. He th threw a rally uh, for us in downtown Philadelphia a little over a week ago. So, um, you know, I, I think it's it's about staying true to progressive values. And I, I think, you know, when you have a choice the way we had in 2016, that, um, you know, I, I don't, um, you know, I'll never regret not not supporting by far the better candidate when we unfortunately had the choice that we were forced to, to have there. And, you know, the way Donald Trump worked out, I, uh, it's, it's, uh, I'm sad every day, the way the, the, the kind of president he's been. Yeah, absolutely. There's no doubt about that. Um, it was, it was interesting learning a lot about you because I have followed you for over two years. Um, you were the first and only elected official in PA willing to perform a same-sex wedding um, before it was "quote unquote" legal. Um, can you kind of explain why um, why you did that and why you were? Um, I just uh, I, um, I I've always had a, 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 a strong sense uh, for the, the rightness and 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 um, it really was. Um, um, a, a big risk. I, I, I didn't seek the legal opinions. I didn't get a legal opinion or anything. I, I, I said, look, I'm going to do this. So if you, if you want to uh, bring those marriage licenses that were being, uh, being written out of Montgomery County, I will solemnize those. And, and uh, we ended up performing almost three dozen uh, same sex weddings when it was still illegal in Pennsylvania to do so. And I said, look, I don't care what the consequences are. Um, you know, I have to make the right choice. I have to do the right thing. And, and if there are consequences, I'll, I'm happy uh, to pay them because I believe so strongly in, in marriage equality and just equality in general. So. Right on. So were there any ramifications for you doing that? What's that? Were there, did there turn out to be any ramifications for you, for you doing it? Yeah, there were a lot of threats. Uh, absolutely. And, and, uh, you know, and, and, uh, I, uh, the, the, the governor who was a Republican at the time said, Hey, you know, you're gonna, you know, get, uh, you know, you're going to get yours. And they uh, were using the health department at the time to kind of be the enforcement agency and, and what have you. And I just said, you know what, um, you know, you know where I live, you know, if you want to send the gay police to come get me, you know, go ahead. I'm not going to stop doing these, uh, not, I'm not going to stop doing these uh, licenses. And I'm proud to say that all of those marriages that I solemnized during that period when it was still illegal, um, all became legal, all became legal marriages. I'm, and I'm really proud of that. And not only that, I actually uh, created a campaign ad for my Senate race in 2016. And I actually led with that. 
I actually led with marriage equality. And, and that's never been done before by uh, a Democrat, particularly in a state like Pennsylvania, which isn't exactly known for hard left. Uh, but I, I just, you know, I'm really proud of that fact. You know, my wife, my wife's a former dreamer and, and I also led with immigration. And I'm, I'm proud to say that I, uh, about all the things that I ran on in 2016, um, I didn't change any of those things in 2018. You know, they've all aged really well. And um, I, uh, I'm really proud of, of all of that. And, and I think these are, uh, I think the party is moving in the right direction, I think, uh, towards embracing these things, whether it's a $15 an hour minimum living wage, whether it's marijuana legalization, whether it's, um, uh, you know, all these different things that, that were once considered unthinkable are now, uh, you know, really much more in the, the democratic mainstream of our party. Absolutely. Um, being your wife's a dreamer, how does it affect you um, as someone political when you see these families being torn apart? And, and oh, it breaks my heart. Uh, 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 we were the only campaign for Lieutenant Governor to visit the Berks County Family Detention Center uh, there in, in Berks County. And, and um, uh, like, we're never more un American when we are persecuting the Americanness of 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 these of these immigrants it, it breaks my heart i mean there were children my own our own children's age riding bicycles behind a prison yard fence uh at the berks county detention facility and and it's it's not it's not uh it's it's not who we are as a country we are we are are uh, we're so much better than this we're so much better than this and 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 donald trump has taken us back to a uh, a place where uh, I don't recognize the kind of cruelty that some people have seemed to embrace towards this. And we, we also em embraced uh, and visited with this lovely um, immigrant family in Philadelphia, Carmela. She is forced to live in a church basement as a sanctuary in Philadelphia. And she's got four children and they are virtual prisoners in their own home in that, in the, in that, basement of the church because they're so concerned that ice is going to swoop in and <clears throat> and deport them where their lives literally are at risk back home um, for retaliation and it's just like what's what's wrong with what's wrong with us where like well, this is not what's wrong with with America these people being here what's wrong with America is the fact that you are persecuting these people and you know again we're we're so much better than this and and uh, it breaks my heart to to see the toll that it's taking on those kids. Those poor kids are climbing the walls. Um, they, they, you know, live in essentially one room with mattresses on the floor and, and they're grateful for that. You know, they're grateful for the sanctuary that the church provides, but they have to be escorted to get on the school bus because of the paranoia that ice is going to come and swoop them up. And again, you know, the, the kind of environment that, that, that Donald Trump and, and others have fostered like that, it's, it's just profoundly un-American and, and, uh, um, I, I would like nothing more if I'm your next lieutenant governor here in Pennsylvania than to have the second lady of Pennsylvania be a former dreamer and have her be a very powerful uh, face to push back against this toxic rhetoric that is coming from uh, the Republican side with respects to immigrants in general. Right on. Um, you, I, I kind of digress a little, but I... I saw you speak in, I'm in Harrisburg area, and I saw you speak at the uh, March for Our Lives. Yep. Um, and you actually talked about the tattoos on your arm. Mm -hmm. um, and I found that very interesting. I had no idea what the meaning was of those. So can you just kind of give yeah. people a, a breakdown of, of what they mean to you? Sure. Well, I mean, uh, right here, uh, uh, this is Braddock zip code 15104 on my arm right here. And then the one that I talked about, um, the one I talked about uh, on uh, on the March for Lives are these are dates when uh, people have lost their lives through violence in my community since I've been mayor. And um, you know, one of the things that's been so inspiring about the March for Our Lives and the Parkland students is is that it's young people and gun violence and activism. And that's exactly how I got my career in public service started. Um, you know, I, I started out in Braddock back in 2001 as a program director. I helped young people get their general equivalency degrees, helped them get their jobs. 
uh, oftentimes their first jobs and their driver's license and bus passes and, and really just kind of helping them, you know, back into the, the, the job market. And, and uh, two of my students were, were, were killed and shot to death. And, and, and that's what prompted me to run for mayor in the first place, you know, is that kind of gun violence, because I wanted to uh, do something to address that. I want to do something that could be successful in that. And, and I'm proud to say, you know, uh, four terms as mayor. The thing that I'm most proud of is we've had eight years without death in our community out of the 12 and a half years I've been mayor. And, and, and I'm, wow. I'm proud of that legacy. And, and uh, I can say that I'm the only candidate for lieutenant governor that has had direct experience dealing with those kind of issues. And, um, you know, I, I understand. And, and uh, just like the Parkland students, it's young people and, and gun violence and activism. And, and that's, and that's what got me into my own career of public services is uh, the young people that campaign for me um, that made the difference in that first election and, and, uh, the gun violence. As, as far as speaking of campaigning, you're, you know, we vote tomorrow reminder to everyone in PA watching. I do see a number of you. Um, what has it been like campaign campaigning this time around? What's, what's different from the way it was last time? You know, it's there's just a lot more energy and enthusiasm. You know, we we prided ourselves in this campaign to go out to as many counties as we possibly could. And we want to engage and meet voters where they're at. It's not just, well, we're only going to go to Philly and we're only going to go to Pittsburgh or we're only going to go to. It's like, you know, Democrats are all across Pennsylvania and they all want to be heard. They all want to participate in the conversation and they all want to be part of this big dialogue that we're having. And, and, you know, last night we got into two o'clock in the morning, we were in Scranton, uh, Pennsylvania, and we've been to Fulton County. We've been to Bradford County. We've been to Wayne County and Elk County and, and all these places. And, and, and it's never, I don't think we're going to convert Bradford County blue, but we just, as Democrats, can't lose 80 to 20 anymore or 70 to 30. We have to be competitive in these places. And we got to make we got to make the case because we're on the right side of history and we're on the right side of these issues. And people people deserve to be heard. And and uh, we've spent a lot of time. We were just in Philadelphia this past weekend and uh, just had a, a nice event in downtown Pittsburgh. So we've certainly spent time in those places. But but we're the only campaign that's. The lieutenant governor that has run a truly statewide race where we've been to all these different counties and and uh, hearing from Democrats all across the spectrum. So what does the, the term progressive mean to you? No, I, I think what it means to me, progressive just means um, uh, we're all better off when we're all better off. And whatever those policies look like, that's what we support. And I think it's it's science based, evidence based uh laws and and uh takes on on it it's like if if we know that we know if we pay somebody 850 or nine dollars an hour we know we absolutely know they can't take care of themselves or their families and we know that they're going to require all kinds of subsidies they're going to require you know uh, uh, snap assistance they're going to require section i mean like like we 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 know that to be true so why would we not want to just pay people a living wage and build the dignity into it up front you know why you know you know to me progressive also means a verb you know progressive is a verb to me and that means like actually working you know where your feet are not where your mouth is and, and that's what we've done. We've been working for the last 17 years in a community that was written off and forgotten and marginalized. You know, it, it means embracing things that are, I think, that are self-evident, that healthcare is a fundamental human right, that we all deserve, if we're going to work 40 hours a week, we all de deserve to live in dignity. We all deserve to not be locked up for something as petty and simple as, as you know, say marijuana. We all deserve uh, to uh, not uh, be persecuted based on our, our, our sexual orientation or how we present ourselves to the world or our immigration status or or we all need to realize that climate change is real and we need to take the appropriate steps. We we all, you know, it should be self-evident that we shouldn't be giving the, the richest corporations and, and the richest citizens a $1.5 trillion tax cut when we're have students all across the country drowning in, in uh, school loan debt, making it impossible for the, to get on with their lives. And 
choose a career that they really want as opposed to one that can pay the bills. And, you know, these things, the, these things don't seem revolutionary or even progressive. They just seem common sense. Like they're just overwhelmingly common sense. And that's how I would describe progressive because it's just, it's just common sense decency where, you know, the, 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 the welfare of the collective is paramount. And, and that's how I, that's the lens, how I view it. Right on. Um, we, and you're going to be able to see all the, the questions and everything after the show. Um, but a lot of people, it looks like are, are asking about fracking. It seems that that is, uh, mm-hmm. and, and when I announced you were coming on, that was every single message I got, um, was, was asking to clarify your stance on fracking. Yeah, fracking. Yeah, fracking. No, I, I, I don't support fracking, uh, at all. And I never have. And I've, I've signed the no fossil fuels money pledge and I have never received a dime from any natural gas or, or oil company uh, whatsoever. Um, you know, here in, here in Braddock, uh, I live across the street from a steel mill and that steel mill um, has been in operation here since 1875. And um, because of foreign competition, uh, it's, it's struggling. And the, uh, jobs and livelihood of, of nearly 3,000 families um, is contingent on, on on those mills staying open. And they came up with an idea where they would drill two wells on their industrial site. Not in my community, by the way, several communities down, but not in my community. So these two wells, um, and because one of their largest single expenses is the natural gas to power the blast furnaces. And without this, without this step, without drilling their own wells for gas, the economic viability of these three mills that it's connected to are in grave jeopardy. And that's 3,000 union family sustaining jobs uh, that are at risk. And I said, in a state that already has 10,000 wells, I think that's a strong trade-off for two wells to save the jobs of 3,000 men and will- women and you know union jobs and, and, all the, and, and all the people that depend on them. So that's not pro fracking that's saying I'm pro union I'm pro family I'm pro uh, I'm pro steel and and um, I, I think that uh, that was a compelling argument in order to, to do that so do you feel that if we went um, more energy dependent and, and things like that 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 would create even more jobs absolutely I would love to have us transition to be a completely renewable energy economy um, uh, but uh, and, and I, I was proud to participate with the Environmental Defense Fund back in 2010. And uh, we had a campaign with the steel workers and the Sierra Club, uh, the Brugelin Alliance, to, to help promote uh, cap and trade legislation. But unfortunately, the Republicans killed that, as we know. Uh, so from an environmental standpoint, you know, we, we have to acknowledge that. And I would love a transition to green energy. And I think we need to make those important investments. Uh, but I also think that that there, there's there's a way of life, and there's there's thousands of jobs at stake, and and I I, I think there's a, a reality that exists there that that uh, I I I could not turn my back on on the union men and women there and that and say you know my my opposition to something it does not outweigh your right to earn uh, and provide food shelter and and. And, and the living that, that takes care of you and your family. And, and that's the only way of life that you've known. So, so and, and being in Pennsylvania, we, we have, um, we are second. The Texas is uh, the number one state with um, pipelines and we're number two, which is crazy. Right. I didn't actually know that. Um, but I went to a place outside of Lancaster called Conestoga. And when you go there, you see pipelines everywhere. They're on people's property. They are going under a school. Are you, um, you talking about, are you referencing the Mariner East too? Yes. Yes. Yeah. yeah. Mm-hmm. Uh, I actually toured the Mariner East pipeline um, uh, as a candidate and I was truly appalled by what I saw. I've never seen anything like it. It was surreal. Um, I saw people with little children and, um, and their bark backyards were torn up and they were fenced off and, and they, they didn't have any rights. And, and, um, you know, when we drove up to one of the sites, they were taking our picture and, 
we were under surveillance and they wrote down our license plate and they made a bunch of calls and they were looking at us through binoculars like we were in North Korea or something. It was completely, um, it was completely um, uh, disorienting and, and disturbing uh, the, the way we were treated when I was on this tour. And it, it's just, I'm appalled. And they have evacuation procedures where they say, don't call anybody, don't do anything, just run away from the pipeline for a mile and a half because because uh, a, a cell phone could activate a, a trigger an explosion i mean just surreal kind of stuff out of some orwellian kind of nightmare and and it's like i i just couldn't believe that this was happening um in our country and i just can't believe that they're digging up people's backyards and they're shipping this dangerous substance through this aging pipeline that's 80 years old without telling everybody it's it's appalling. It's absolutely appalling. And, and, and every, every elected official in Pennsylvania, I think it should be mandatory that they, they all go on that same key, that, that same Mariner East tour that I did, because you hear the word pipeline and you think, Oh, pipeline, you know, it's like, you know, intellectually you think you understand it. You don't, I didn't, I didn't understand it till I saw it uh, firsthand. I didn't understand it until I saw it going through people's backyards with children you know, little toddlers, you know, and they couldn't play in their backyard. And, and then it's like, it's, it was just horrible. And, and all this is for is just shipping plastic, you know, compound or, you know, for plastics to be made in Europe. It's just, there's, there's no, there's no rationale for what that's, for what's occurring with that. So. Right. Absolutely. And we um, actually, a lot of us gathered, there were, I think, well, a couple hundred of us gathered at the Capitol um, to um, give our pleas to Governor Wolf um, because he has continuously ignored um, our pleas about the pipeline. Um, so, so given what you said and given the fact that he has been completely disregarding it, um, can you agree to sit down with him and, and speak about how bad this is and hopefully even convince them I, it, was, it was it was a real education and an eye-opening experience for me to see it firsthand um and 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 the way we were treated like they were some kind of secret police unit and and writing down our license plates it, it was it was just bizarre and and i got to meet these families and yeah it's it was very disturbing and and uh uh, it, it really helped form my opinion on it. And, and uh, it's, it's something, again, that uh, I, I don't think uh, has, uh, um, has, has any place in, in people's backyards the way it, it is currently right now. It's just not, not right. Yeah, and and we're just we're hoping Wolf can can take that uh, same tour, um, so he can you know understand the the magnitude. Um, so, you um, what do you support the federal job guarantee? You you mean the one laid out by Senator Sanders recently? Is that yes. yeah? Mm -hmm. Yeah, I, I, I think these are important. I, I think it's important. I, I think everybody deserves, you know, everybody deserves to, to that kind of a thing. I mean, uh, you know, this uh, you know, one of my favorite quotes is, you know, we need bread and roses. You know, it, it's like everybody to, you needs to have a job that is is uh, able to to afford, you know, to take care of themselves and family and, and just to have some nice things in their lives as well, too. So. Um, you know, I was uh, really, really, truly honored to share a stage with Senator Sanders in Philadelphia in the uh, last Friday, and and uh, I, I really support his ideas. And I think it's really compelling that you know all of the people that are thinking about running in 2020 are embracing it, you know, and, and embracing all of these things that Bernie has really brought into the mainstream. And and uh, you know, to to have his support, I think. Um, you know, is, is, uh, really, you know, really special. Yeah. That's pretty much the mother of all endorsements. <laughs> pretty much. I mean, he's, uh, he's the, uh, progressive hero. Um, so how you kind of loosely touched on, um, college, um, debt, how or do you support, um, tuition free college? I, I do. I, I do. It, and, you know, everything that we take for granted right now, 
whether it's a five a five day work week or you know public school education from kindergarten through 12th grade was once considered a radical idea or a revolutionary idea at one point in time in our history and i love those bumper stickers where it's like you know you know unions responsible for the weekend and you know all the, all these 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 things that are, are were so radical one time and and this idea that that you know a young person has to incur six figures of debt just to get a college degree is 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 absurd and and i, I think we in this society are, are failing um miserably by that metric um you know we in our society have money for the things that we value and unfortunately we've valued the defense budget way too much uh, we have valued tax cuts for the super wealthy as by witness of the recent tax code overhaul uh, and meanwhile everyone says well we can't afford decent health care for everybody or we can't afford to make college accessible um, uh, at a quality state institution i mean all these things you know have to change so uh, i a absolutely support that what are the biggest differences um, between you and your competitors for Democratic uh, competitors for this position? I know um, there there's a woman, Nina Ahmad, um, who seems to kind of be neck and neck with you right now. I'm not in the in the poll I saw. Um, so what let's take her, for instance. What are the differences mainly between you two? Uh, well, I, 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 uh, I've, uh, I'm not going to, you know, there, uh, you know, I, I think the differences are, 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 are simple and I'm, I'm going to only stay positive. I think the differences are, you know, progressive for me, my life has been a verb and that has meant working, uh, for 17 years for progressive ideas and values, whether that's education, whether that's, uh, community police reform, whether that's championing marijuana, uh, uh, legalization, whether that's uh, championing immigration, whether that's championing marriage equality and LGBTQ rights, whether that's championing, uh, I, I, I think that's that's the, the the main difference there. You know, I, I think is is working as a grassroots true progressive before uh, before it became more mainstream, uh, and I think um, I, I think it's important uh, to to remember, you know. I've been doing this now for 17 years and think how much different the world was, you know, in, in 2001 compared to it is now, how much things have changed. And, and uh, I've been working at that for that long. And, and I think it's, it's, it's easy to come along now and say, I'm progressive or I'm this. It's like, again, it's, it's progress is a verb. And I think I'm the only candidate in this race that has lived that life, you know, with that kind of ethos. I have a question from um, Anna. She was um, elected, I'm sorry, Anna, forget the position, but a, a local position. Um, she is a, a progressive, a Bernie supporter. Um, she's, she wants to know um, about disability rights in PA. Um, how can we protect people with disabilities in, in the age of Trump, so to speak? Well, I mean, I, I think I think we were able to, to do that by by electing quality people that that can push back and veto a lot of the crazy stuff that's coming through the pipeline uh, from uh, from the Republican House and, and the Republican legislature. You know, they're constantly trying to eliminate a woman's right to choose. They want to turn Pennsylvania right to work. Um, and, and that's what I try to remind voters across the state is, is that you know, if you're a progressive, if you're a Democrat, if Governor Wolf loses, it's all going to change radically here in Pennsylvania, much more so than what Donald Trump can do, because this is specifically here in Pennsylvania. And whether it's disability rights, whether it's, you know, it's a woman's right to choose, whether it's um, any any hope of ever getting a severance tax for natural gas or it's it's right to work. You know, all these things are going to be be a reality if, if a Scott Wagner wins governor. And, and that's why I believe we're the only candidate that can strengthen the ticket enough to bring those Democrats that left us in 2016 back uh, in 2018 back into the conversation. Because we've had it. We had enough of them leave that we need to bring them back. There are persuadable Democrats. I'm proud to say that I was involved with the Connor Lamb race um, uh, and help with the get out the vote and and and. 
You know, we need to compete where we need to compete in areas. And, and I've, I, I've been inspired by what I've seen. And I think Democrats can take back more than we think we can. And, and that, that means good, solid, progressive values. It means choosing for me in my mind, choosing the best candidate when you have a choice of two in that race, like we had with Connor Lamb and Rick Saccone. And some people are asking about um, you endorsed um, Costa recently. Mm -hmm. I'm not, I forget his first name, uh, but people are asking you your reason uh, for endorsing Costa. Yeah. Yeah. Paul's, Paul's been our state rep for, uh, for as long as I've been mayor and he has really done a, a lot of important things uh, for the town and uh, he's been uh, a really great state rep. So. He, um, people are saying that he's not supportive of unions. No, and he has all the, that's, that's just not true. Paul has all of the labor support, uh, in, in that race. Paul has a lot of labor support and, and union endorsements. Paul's very supportive of labor and labor is very supportive of Paul. Okay. Um, what should, what can we do as far as I know tomorrow's going to be a huge day um, in, let's see, Pennsylvania, Idaho, Nebraska, and Oregon. Um, what can we do to start ensuring the, um, the, that our elections are more fair, put it that way. Um, do you support paper ballots? Do you um, want to open primaries? What, where would you like to see this go? Here in, uh, here in Pennsylvania, we have to have everyone, has to have new voting machines by 2020. So I think that's really encouraging, uh, to be honest with you. Um, but uh, I don't know if, if who's old enough to remember uh, the Al Gore, George Bush election. Remember when swinging chads, everyone's like, we got to get rid of this paper junk. You know, I mean, it's like, you know, it wasn't that long ago where paper was a disaster. And now we all want paper ballots back again, you know, with good reason. And, you know, I, I think, I think in, I think by 2020, we are, we'll have a, a solid voting um, system in place in Pennsylvania that is hack proof and, and provides that kind of paper backup. But I think it's also important to, to know that that leadership has to come from Democrats. Unfortunately, we're, we're not going to get that leadership from Republicans because they subscribe to this lie that there's voter fraud and, and all this crazy stuff, even though it's exceedingly rare and, and there aren't any examples. And we have a president, a president that says that millions of people have voted illegally with no proof whatsoever. None can't prove it. And, and that's, that's the tragedy there and, and is being investigated for possible collusion with Russia. And it's alarming. Uh, and that's what I mean by, you know, the, the, the best choice in an election and you never, we have to defend against something that you never thought you'd have to defend against here in this country, in this current state of affairs. So, um, and, you know, I think paper ballots are, are, are a good thing, but, but here in Pennsylvania, I feel a lot better knowing that uh, by 2020, we have to have our act together and, and make sure that um, voting is secure here in Pennsylvania. So as far as tomorrow, um, let's say people are kind of 50, 50 or people are not, really are thinking about not voting. Um, if you could leave our audience with something to encourage them to go to the polls for you and be the deciding factor of, of them actually, you know, picking your name tomorrow, what do you want to leave our viewers I, with? I would say that if, 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 if I win the Lieutenant Governor's race, I will be the most progressive candidate ever elected to a statewide office here in Pennsylvania history, you know, and, and um, I, I, I think I have pretty strong bona fides in that in that department. And, and like I said, I was honored to share a state with Bernie and honored to have him say all these these things. And, and um, uh, I'm, I'm honored uh, to, to have that. But I'm also honored by uh, being a four term mayor of a marginalized community and, and working on these issues uh, for the for the past 17 years before it was part of our mainstream conversation. I'm proud to have stuck up for things, whether it's it's the the, the racial inequality of our marijuana uh, laws, whether it's 
um, uh, marriage equality, whether it's it's championing for living wage jobs. Uh, I, I think all these things uh, are important. And, and I think, uh, you know, there's there's no margin of for error of indifference in these elections anymore. Uh, you know, when you look at the margin where we have won elections recently, we, we, we can't afford to leave any votes on the table. And that's why I traveled 45,000 miles all around Pennsylvania to all these counties, because, you know, Fulton County, for example, may have 600 Democratic voters, but I, I want those 600 votes. I want to talk to those people because they're good people and their votes count the same as somebody in Philly or Pittsburgh or any city. It's like we, we need to engage these folks and, and, and take that argument. And that's what I would say to anybody that is indifferent about voting tomorrow is is that there's there really and truly is a lot at stake and i'd be honored to have their support and isn't it true that last time you had uh what you won by one vote is yeah my correct? first my very first election uh 13 years ago was by one vote and that's what i what i mentioned was youth uh youth activism and and that's that's the reason why i won and and that's um and that's the story i tell people where it's like look Voting matters. Every vote matters. And, 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 uh, um, uh, you know, it, it's, you know, it's, it, you know, we live in a cynical age and, and it's like, you know, I, I, I don't ever want somebody to take that right for granted. And, and it's like, whether you vote for me or somebody else, just vote, participate, you know, it, it's, it's like, look around, read your news, read your Twitter feed. You know, this is the world that we live in now because not enough people voted. You know, it's like it has consequences. It has ramifications. We all need to participate and engage. And, and that's what I would just want for myself. And that's the kind of behavior that my wife and I are modeling for our three children because they need to be informed voting uh, members uh, as well, too, when, it, when it's going to be their turn. So if, you know, I definitely, I do see um, some PA people here. Um, just a reminder, tomorrow is voting day. Um, we, um, John is open to um, all counties and districts because it is a, a statewide position. Um, so what's that? Yeah, it is a statewide office. It doesn't matter where you live in Pennsylvania. If you're a registered Democrat in Pennsylvania, I would be beyond honored to have your support tomorrow here in Pennsylvania. And I, you know, want to thank you for the opportunity to to be on your show tonight. So thank you. absolutely, and thank you so much for joining me, especially so last minute. Yeah. Um, and I wish you all the best of luck tomorrow. Well, thank um, you. Is there anything? Um, let's see. I've Mark, can you please post his website link in the um, comments so we have that? Um, so we'll put that there just in case anyone, you know, wants further uh, information. But thank you again so much for joining thank us tonight. You. And for having me. all the best tomorrow. Absolutely. And my wife's waving uh, goodbye as well, too. So <laughs> for having us on. And it was a real pleasure. And, and tomorrow, go to the polls and vote. We'd be honored to have anyone support here in Pennsylvania. Thank you again for having me on. Absolutely. Take care. All right. Good night. Thank you. Good night.